You mentioned DSP. Um, we have to talk about intelligence at the node. I've heard a little bit about that here today. You've got a lot of capability right at the node, right at the sensor. No need to send all that data, encrypted or not, over the internet. To what extent do you have features in your current chips and roadmaps or in your architecture that enables intelligence at the node? So that's, we, we looked at this um, a number of years ago and we looked around and one of the companies that really had that was a company called SensorNode and we made that acquisition uh, late last year. What we, what we did there was really started to integrate how data is used and how it's used across wireless standards and how you can have uh, not all of the data transmitted but the core subset of the data transmitted because one of the big problems is if everything is connected, you get an overload of data. So you need to refine what data gets transmitted, where it goes to, and how it's moved through the system. And that's what's important in this, and that's why we did the sensor node acquisition. Okay, so a last question with regard to sensors. Any chance, since you're right out there on the edge, and now in the middle, in the cloud, right out there on the edge with sensors, that we might see an integration of additional sensors into ARM's architectures, possibly even, you mentioned wearables, MEMS, and other sorts of real-world analog sensors? For us, we work with the sensor companies. We're, we're a, um, a digital company. We clearly have uh, bus infrastructures that work with analog, and our goal is to work with multiple sensors. We think there's multiple sensor standards out there. We think it's really important that we work with an ecosystem and that those sensor guys really bring their best to market, and we work, work with them. And then the third bit of the... IoT is the radio side as well, which is another analog side. And we clearly work with a number of radio companies around low power, boot, low, low power Bluetooth and all the 802 dot standards that come out from that as well. You made some announcements which were new to me, but perhaps not new announcements about various open standards that ARM is either currently supporting, planning on supporting, or hoping to catalyze. Can you comment on any of those of significance for the internet? One of the big ones is the thrust announcement, which has got things, which has got Google and a bunch of other companies in there as well. And that's really enabled, really driven by this open standards, taking not just one vertical, but trying to put a base layer that every vertical could go use. That's the key one that we've done in the Internet of Things. We support multiple open standards, and as you've seen from ARM, everything from our high end where we do open CL and open JDK activities in the graphics all the way through to our embedded applications. We like these open, open protocols and open APIs. That's how you get the best companies working together. That's how you get what's best for the end customer and the consumer. If you, stand, if you have open standards, you get competition that really drives an ecosystem. Sensor to server, amazing. I'm here with Ian, ARM TechCon 2014, Chris Schufo, Extension Media. Ian, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Thanks.